Chapter 8, Gases. We'll begin with section 8.1, gas pressure. So when we talk about gas pressure here, really we're talking about the force that the particles, the gaseous particles around us, uh, push on us or put on us by colliding with us. So for example, the Earth's atmosphere, you know, we have something called atmospheric pressure. And so really, again, this is just the sum of all of the pressure or of the force that the molecules that make up our atmosphere are exerting on us. So the atmosphere above us, it does exert a pretty large pressure on objects at the surface of the Earth because there are a lot of gaseous particles. There are a lot of atmospheric particles pushing down on us. So we don't really think about this because we're just used to it and we evolved on, in this environment. But right now, there is the pressure roughly equal to the weight of a bowling ball pressing on an area the size of your thumbnail. That amount of pressure is on you right now. It's about 14.7 pounds per square inch. This is about what one atmosphere of pressure is equal to. Now there are many different units of pressure. The, most, uh, the two most common units you will see in this course, or in this chapter I should say, are kilopascals, KPA, and atmospheres. So kilopascals are derived from pascals, which is the recommended IUPAC unit. And one pascal is just equal to one newton over meters squared. So newton is a unit of force, so it's really just force divided by area. Kilopascals then is just 1,000 pascals. Now PSI is the unit we're most commonly familiar with in the United States. You know, you often see this if you're filling up like a basketball or a volleyball or on your tires, it uses the units of PSI. And again, air pressure at sea level is about 14.7 PSI, pounds per square inch. Atmosphere is the most common unit, so it was one, one atmosphere is 101,325 pascals. Um, sometimes you'll see bars and millibars used, especially in meteorology, you'll see millibars used. Sometimes you'll see uh, inches mercury, so if you look up the pressure, uh, let's say on weather.com in Raleigh right now, you'll probably see, you might see inches mercury, you might see centimeters mercury. So these are often used by the aviation industry as well. The two, last, the two units, um, these are probably third and fourth most common in this chapter, are tors and uh, especially millimeters of mercury, MMHG. So one tor is equal to uh, one over 760 atmosphere, or in other words, one atmosphere equals 760 tor. Should al also be noted that a millimeter mercury and a tor have the same unit, or they have the same magnitude, I should say. So one atmosphere also equals 760 millimeters of mercury. Okay, so let's talk about some preliminary ways to measure pressure. First, let's look at a barometer. So barometers are used to measure atmospheric pressure. So how barometers work is we've got a long vacuum tube. That tube has liquid in it. So this end up here is sealed off. The end at, towards the bottom is open, but it's submersed in liquid. So the atmospheric pressure pushes down on the liquid in this open container, and that pressure helps to push the liquid up into the barometer. So we can determine the pressure, the, or the atmospheric pressure, based upon how far up the tube the liquid moves. So the more atmospheric pressure it, there is, the more force that's pushing down on this liquid, which the liquid then will then fur flow further up into the tube. If the pressure is low, the force pushing down on the liquid is not as high, the liquid won't flow as much up into the tube. So pressure is calculated by taking the height of the column in mercury, or excuse me, the height of the column in meters, multiplied by the density of the liquid, which is usually mercury. Now it's important to note this density must be in kilograms per meters cubed, times the gravity. So it's the height times the density of the liquid because more dense liquids don't move up as high, so mercury would not move up as high as water would, times gravity, since the liquid is also fighting gravity here. Now P, you're solving for the pressure in pascals. So again, pascals is a newton over meters squared. When you break that unit down further, you get kilogram over meters per second squared. So that's why H needs to be in meters, D needs to be in kilograms over meters cubed, and G needs to be in 9.8, or excuse me, it needs to be in meters per second squared. That way, these units cancel out to give you kilogram over meter second squared, which is a Pascal. So let's look at a quick example problem. This problem states, showed the calculations supporting the claim that atmospheric pressure near sea level corresponds to the pressure exerted by a column of mercury that is about 760 millimeters high. The density of mercury is 13.6 grams per centimeters cubed. Okay, 
So first thing I want to do is I want to convert that height. I want to convert that height from millimeters to meters. So 760 millimeters. I'm going to convert that to meters using this conversion factor. And I get 0 0.760 meters. Six, second thing I need to do here is convert the density. Remember that if you're using this formula, the density needs to be in kilograms per meters cubed. So I'm going to take 13.6 grams per centimeters cubed. First, I'm going to convert to kilograms using this conversion factor. Then I'm going to convert it from centimeters cubed to meters cubed using this conversion factor. Now it's important to remember here that you need to cube the conversion factor. So the unit and the numbers here need to be cubed. If you do not cube the number and the unit, you will end up getting the wrong answer. So when you calculate and solve for this, you get 13,600 kilograms per meters cubed. Okay. Now we can plug this into our pressure equation. So the height in meters times the density in kilograms per meters cubed times the gravitational constant in meters per second squared. And you get 101,292.8 kilopascals, which if you go back to our pressure slide, that is almost exactly one atmosphere. Uh, it's 101.325 pascals to an atmosphere. So this, I would say, generally supports the claim that atmospheric pressure near sea level corresponds to the pressure exerted by column mercury about 760 millimeters high. So this is very close to sea level. The pressure at sea level is one atmosphere. Okay, let's have you try a knowledge check question. What pressure is exerted by a 75 meter high column of water? So the height, 75 meters, the density of water is 1.00 grams per centimeters cubed, and you can just use 9.8 meters per second squared for the gravitational constant. So go ahead and calculate this and you notice here some of the answers are in atmosphere, summer, and Pascal. So pay attention, if your answer in Pascal does not match this number, then you're gonna need to convert to atmospheres using this conversion factor right here. So give this one a try. Okay, and the correct answer here is B, 7.26 atmospheres. All right, last thing in this section, we're going to talk about manometers. So manometers are another way to measure the pressure of gas. Now specifically, they're used to measure the pressure of gas that is trapped inside a container. They can be open end or closed end. I'm going to focus on the open end manometers. Now here, you need to pay attention to how, how you need to find H here and which equation to use. Now I don't want you to focus too much on these variables because when in these type of problems, you are not actually going to be tasked with solving for this here. We're gonna show you how you find it directly. So what you need to focus on is whether or not you need to add the height or you need to subtract the height from the atmospheric pressure. So let's break down what's going on here. So I wanna focus on these two images. So we've got the gas here trapped in the container and these gray line you see right here, this is mercury. So you've got the gas in the container, then you've got some liquid mercury and then it's open to the atmosphere. So there's sort of a, a battle going on here. You've got the pressure inside, or the, the pressure of the gas inside the container. This gas is trying to escape. So it's trying to push the mercury. It's trying to push on the mercury and push its way out and escape the container. The atmosphere is trying to get into the container. So those molecules are trying to go through that open end and push against the mercury and get into the container. So you've got two sides pushing on each other. You've got the gas trying to push out and the atmosphere trying to push in. So typically these manometers, they have a line on them right here. And this line is the, the one atmosphere line. So if the mercury level is right at this line, it means that the gas inside the container has a pressure of exactly one atmosphere, or it has the exact same pressure as the atmospheric pressure. That is sort of the equilibrium line. Again, kind of like a game of tug of war, except two, the two sides are pushing on each other instead. So if the mercury level is right at this line, it means the pressure of the gas inside the container and the pressure of the atmosphere are exactly equal to one another. So if that mercury level is above that line, it means the gas inside is winning. It's pushed the mercury above that line, which means the pressure of the gas inside the container is greater than the pressure of the atmosphere. So you would add whatever this height value is. If the level of the mercury or the mercury level is below that line, it means the atmosphere is winning. It's pushed the mercury way below this line. So it means the atmospheric pressure, whatever it is, is greater than the pressure of the gas inside that container there. 
So you would subtract this height from the atmospheric pressure to find the pressure of the gas inside the container. Okay. So here is a practice problem explaining that concept. So here you see the mercury line is above the atmosphere line and the height is 26.4 centimeters. So this is in 20, it's 26.4 centimeters of mercury. So use the logic I talked about on the previous slide and give this practice problem a try. See if you can solve for A. Once you solve for A using this diagram, then you just need to convert from millimeters mercury to atmospheres and then from atmospheres to kilopascals. So pause the video, give this one a try. And once you have done so, you should find the answers here. So the answer to A is 1024 millimeters of mercury. So since this is above the line, you need that means the pressure of the gas inside the container is greater than the atmospheric pressure. So I need to add this. So if I assume my atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury, I take 760 millimeters of mercury plus 264 millimeters mercury. So I get 1024 millimeters mercury. And then you just convert that to atmospheres and then to kilopascals. OK. So next, oh, I'm sorry. I think this is, sorry, this is a typo. This should be, uh, I believe this should be 360 kilopascals. Let me double check that answer and I will fix it on the PowerPoint slides. But I don't believe this answer is correct. Let me double check that. Uh, go, well, by the time you are seeing this video and you see the PowerPoint slides, this answer here should be fixed. But these two are good. OK, so that is the end of section 8.1. I'll see you in the next video for section 8.2 when we learn about a couple different gas laws.